What's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. Now we're exploring a few new ideas on the channel and I have something on my mind I'd like to share with you. Now this may come as a surprise to many of you, but I've been around long enough to remember when Spotify, CDs, and all forms of digital music didn't exist. Way back when, consumers would invest heavily in large clunky systems to play back sounds etched into grooved discs, more commonly known as vinyl records. Because of the immobility of these systems, you'd think that the compact nature of new media would be welcomed with open arms, but that simply wasn't always the case. Though many of us adapted to the digital age, there was still a large and vocal group of consumers that felt quality was lost as music playback moved out of our living rooms and into our pockets. Even today, there's a sizable group of audiophiles that scoff at the quality of this newfangled digital media and submit that the sounds of a vinyl LP is vastly superior to any other format, but I'm here to tell you they've got it all wrong. Before I get too deep, I think it's important to understand the mechanics of listening to vinyl. In layman's terms, the final tracks are literally carved into a master record made from aluminum and lacquer. This disc is then used to make a nickel-coated stamper that creates an imprint onto a vinyl disc. As the turntable's needle passes through these grooves, its movement is converted to a voltage that drives the speakers and sends sweet, sweet music throughout your home. Vinyl purists claim that because the process used to make and play back audio from an LP is continuous or analog, it's a pure representation of the sound. This process is in opposition to high quality digital mediums, which reproduce thousands of digital snapshots, making the sound wave jagged and non-continuous. One might conclude that this loss of data would subsequently cause a drop in quality, but a brilliant scientist named Harry Nyquist proved that if sampled enough times, a waveform can be accurately and indiscernibly reproduced within the threshold of human hearing. It essentially argues use, there is no perceivable difference between analog audio waveform and high quality digital reproduction. But there's an even simpler explanation to why digital audio can technically outperform vinyl. The amount of frequency spectrum data that can be stored on a record is extremely limited compared to digital mediums. Really low notes like the thump of a kick drum take up a lot of physical groove space. And really high frequencies, think of a really high note in a screeching guitar solo, create grooves that are so shallow the playback needle can't fit inside them. Since digital media doesn't have these frequency limitations, Drake's bass can bump as much as it wants and the high end can be so sibilant it sounds like Freddie Mercury's T's, P's, and Z's will be popping right inside your ears. The onslaught of MP3s, Spotify, iTunes, and Ponos does bring a whole different set of considerations, but I'll save that for another video. But wait, there's more! When a song is too loud, it takes up too much physical space on a vinyl record. The groove will need to take more dramatic swings in order to accurately reproduce the sound, which in turn will cause the needle to make more drastic movements, potentially causing distortion. The mechanics of a vinyl record truly limit the dynamic range, or loudness, it can reproduce. So high quality digital audio is better at reproducing high and low notes and its loudness can be more dynamic. All right, gang, that's it, we did it. All the record stores can close, we can reclaim the tops of our media cabinets and we'll never have to hear from Jack White again, right? Not so fast. There's certainly a case to be made for vinyl, even with its inherent limitations. The sound reproduced by a vinyl record is unique. There's no other media quite like it. Those exact same technical limitations we just discussed actually contribute to the sound of vinyl and why it is so sought after. Now when folks say vinyl sounds warmer, they're describing the reduction of the high end and the bass frequencies not being too overpowering. And yes, the constant and continuous reproduction of the original waveform. But I believe the appeal of vinyl goes beyond quality. The process of listening to vinyl simply requires more of the listener. First, you'll need to go searching through bins at your local record store for the perfect tunes, or go online and patiently wait as your package is delivered to your doorstep, praying the delivery service doesn't shove it in your mailbox. You have to physically pull the record out of its sleeve, gently place it on the turntable, and gingerly rest the needle in the groove. The process promotes a closeness with the music, and is perhaps the closest interaction one could have with a physical representation of a sound wave. As the music begins playing, you're compelled to sit and actively listen to your selection. This turns the act of listening to music an event, and that is something that our society lost as we transition to a 
digital medium for music. You can listen to CDs in the car, pop on some rollerblades and take a spin with your disc man. Even now, people mostly listen to music when they're doing other things. It's hard to critically listen to your favorite Steely Dan record when you're squeezing an avocado at a grocery store or powering through your workout routine. The process of active music consumption promotes critical listening, which inevitably will make music sound better because your brain is ready to notice more about the music. Listening to vinyl is like taking the time to enjoy all the flavor nuances of a good meal. Listening to Spotify through your earbuds while writing a paper is like wolfing down Taco Bell because you're starving and have a long to-do list. Beyond that, the experience of going to a record store and sifting through LPs is cathartic for some, me included. You may walk in looking for the latest and greatest by Vampire Weekend, but ultimately end up finding a collection of new and undiscovered gems. Most importantly, buying vinyl is a great way to support artists. In this age of digital streaming, musicians aren't making as much money on the sale of their music. Even if you don't have a turntable, if you buy a band's record, you'll have a collector's item from one of your favorite groups. I truly believe that the resurgence in vinyl is due to listeners' hunger for intimacy with the music they love. It's not that one medium sounds better than the other, but the environment around the two consumption habits is certainly different. It's important for us as consumers of music to lean into this desire, regardless of our preferred musical medium. There's a symbiotic relationship between us and the musicians that create the music we love. Now, whether you prefer an analog or a digital signal, relentlessly pursue good music and support it whenever you can. Music challenges us creatively and intellectually all while propelling artists to take their craft to the next level. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Marty Music. Thanks again, and we'll see you real soon.